All right, come down. Three, two, one. Hey, it's Lottie with Thigh 96. Special guest in the studio today, Morgan. How you doing? I'm feeling great. I'm happy to be in Memphis. Uh, I love the name. And like when you're reading your name, you're like, wait, what's the X? How does this? So yeah. explain for that real quick. It gives you a moment to pause and be like, how do I pronounce it? And then you actually notice that it's there. Um, for me, the X was something that represents change and evolution. And, you know, I feel like as an artist, I am constantly evolving and growing. And when I was putting out this music, it didn't make sense to me to put it out as my full name because it felt like that's not even what the music is about. Like the music is a, an idea and the X sort of represented that for me. That's pretty awesome. I, uh, before we get big into the interview, I, I bartend at a restaurant called Corky's Barbecue. And it's so funny, I actually wear a name tag and it says Laddie. I have a different name, Okay. L-A-T-T-Y. People are like, oh, Laddie. Or they go, um, like, oh, great experience. We'll see you later, Larry. And I'm like, ah, uh. <laughs> so now that's kind of like the inside joke. Yeah. But apparently you have some deal with Corky's Barbecue here in Memphis as well. So Corky's Barbecue, the legendary spot. The story is, are you ready? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready for this. <laughs> are you ready, listeners? <laughs> now, I've, I've been bartending there for like eight years, okay? So I'm okay. really excited yeah, about Yeah, you know, this. it's famous. Mm -hmm. It's famous. I mean, I'm from Nashville, Tennessee, as you know. And my grandmother grew up in Memphis. So my grandmother's mother, my great-grandmother, okay. and Don Peltz, the founder of Corky's, his grandmother and my great-grandmother are sisters. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so here, absolute true story. I worked with Don. I wow. know him. Wow. I got hired in 2009 before he passed away. Yeah. And he was a phenomenal human being. Totally. I mean, he would literally, people don't know this, but he would actually go in the back, I mean, hands-on kind of a guy, but he had such a personality. He'd be in the back singing rap songs with wow. us when the movie Hustle and Flow came out, yeah. right? He was singing the songs, and he's like singing, it's hard out here for a pimp. It's that's hilarious. That's so cool. But when you see, that's a great story, yeah. too, by the way. I'm, I mean, I, I can't help but think, like, you know, to be from Tennessee and, like, have a song called Home that's, play, like, you're playing my song, and, you know, to think that, like, you know, he's not around, but if he heard my song and knew, like, the family connection, and, you know, I'm just imagining that in my head, and that makes me, like, really emotional. I feel, like, so, like, tied to you now, and, I, and it's weird because family is, is all about Corky's, and Corky's is all about family. Yeah, my grandmother was so, I mean, you know, she's passed as well, and but so proud to be from Memphis, and, you know, so proud to tell anybody about Corky's, you know what I mean? Every time we came to Memphis, it was like, Corky's, 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 so... It's, it's like, it's so cool. I know your cousins. <laughs> I, I've known them since they were kids. Now they're driving. <laughs> and now they went to college. I, I mean, I, I, it's like we all kind of raised each other to a point, you know? Um, I know we're going off on that, but that's so, that's so cool, man. And, and, and congratulations to your family and all that, because it's a big business. And they have the best hats ever, I'm not gonna lie. Every time I go somewhere and I travel, I wear a Corky's hat. Wow. And at least somebody in any airplane. You know, like, it's famous. Yeah, it's they're famous like, everywhere. And they're like, oh, have you been there? Oh, I've seen it on QVC. I'm like, dude, I'm working tomorrow. It's cool, <laughs> it's cool when people from California are like, you know, when they know about Corky's and you're just like, you know, my first job also when I lived in Nashville, you probably know this place. My first job was at Tootsie's. Okay. You know that place? Yeah. It's downtown and it's it's famous for being like what was the original backstage for the Ryman, which didn't have a backstage. It was just you walked out in the alley and then you walked into a bar right. and that was backstage. Um, but it's like places like Tootsie's and, and Corky's are these like famous Nashville and these famous Tennessee spots. And, you know, for me, they're just like, that's kind of the stomping ground. I used to have a key to Tootsie's, which is crazy. It's so cool. I was in Nashville maybe three weeks ago now in Tootsie's while I uh, had a beer waiting to go see uh, Bob Weir at the Ryman, which wow. is a phenomenal show. So I spent a lot of time in Nashville as well. Cool. Um, uh, Don Peltz, uh, owner of Corky's, he's a great singer, but obviously you, 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 you kind of can hold a tune, right? I, I would like to think I can. <laughs> Dude, I, I, how is this whirlwind of coming out? Um, you know, you've got uh, on uh, Spotify and all this kind of jazz, two million, eight million views and stuff. I mean, yeah. how surreal is it man, with the song Home? Um, I think surreal is like maybe an understatement. I, you know, it's to me, this is like who I am and I have wanted to make music my whole life and, and to have it embraced is the most incredible feeling in the entire world. How did you how did you get with Walk the Moon on that song? So Nick and I like um, 
we connect musically. Like we were connected because someone was like, you need to meet, you need to like work on music together. And we ended up, uh, the first night we met, we wrote a song. Um, but that was just kind of the start of it. The thing is, is that Nick kept like sending me videos. He would hear home, like in places where he was on tour and he would send me these like incredible videos of him singing along to it. And I was just like, that's the cutest thing in the world. And so I'm gonna drop some information from Memphis, but I'm drop releasing, it. I'm releasing uh, an EP in January, nice. which is gonna feature another song with Nick on it. And we, I had this song that I was working on and I was like, I sent Nick that version and I was like, I want someone to sing this with me, what do you think? Immediately, he sends me back a voice memo of him singing the song and I was like, oh wow, oh wow, okay, that's it. So we get in the studio, we are working on that and that's about the time that Lollapalooza was happening. Right. So we couldn't sing that song that we'd been working on. He had been sending me these videos of him singing home and I was like, it would be so fun if you just came on stage and like sang home with me. And we ended up like, showing up at Lollapalooza unplanned, we were both wearing all white. Like we never talked about it. And nice. so it showed up, it was this it was this incredible moment. And then we recorded home like right after that. So it's because of this other collaboration that, you know, it kind of exploded in this really special, magical way. I mean, it's all over the place. I mean, here I'm 96 for playing it. Then of course, through other social media outlets like Spotify and then uh, I, I, Alt Nation and things like that, they're all playing it. I mean, it, it's, it's it's a phenomenal thing, and, and you also play festivals. I know you're playing Hangout Fest this year, yeah. um, and we kind of talked about it off, off camera and off air. Uh, what do you like about festivals? What I love about festivals are, you know, I think that's kind of how you should experience music. You know, I think clubs are awesome, um, but for me, I'm kind of ADD, and like a festival gives you all sorts of music to experience. You know, you get to it doesn't matter the genre. I think people get too tied to like genre, but festivals tend to give you like, they tend to give you just something that you can experience and like, you discover, I think your favorite bands going to festivals. You know what I mean? Like, right. um, you know, FYF Fest, which happened in LA, which doesn't happen anymore. It was just like, you know, from rock bands to hip hop to Missy Elliott, like, you know, you can experience stuff you already know and you can also find stuff that you're gonna fall in love with. You're absolutely right. I'm a big festival person, and um, uh, I, I go to all of them. I mean, I go to the hangouts, the Bonnaroo's, and all that kind of jazz. And in one night, you can literally watch Chance the Rapper mm -hmm. and U2, mm -hmm. and then end it with Portugal the Band. You yeah. know, and like that's it. So you're getting all different kind of genres, yeah. all different decades worth of music as well. Totally, and, and also demographic wise, like you're not tied to like you're not tied. It's not about age or color or gender, or like anything like that. It's like it's it's human you know what i mean it's like it's a visceral way to experience music and more people can look who you are so they literally by their phone they can see you doing it they can snapchat their friend they can put it on any kind of social media and next thing you know morgan's all over somebody else's facebook and they're if, if they've never heard of you before well they saw their friends it was crazy lollapalooza was crazy that was the first time i felt like this like shift because i walked out and it was just like all of these people how many people know? I mean, it went all the way back, like, you know, I was a couple, couple hundred, like, thousands, at I least have thousands. no idea. I don't know numbers. I'll you know? say it. Seven like, billion millions people were there. Millions of millions people. Millions of people. <laughs> yeah. And you got there, just, you were like, you're like, all right, this is it. Well, you know, you're like, yeah, it was just, it was cosmic. It was like, it was like, okay, here we go, you know, and I'm looking forward to, you know, next, this is just the start for me, but it's very exciting and it feels like. It feels like family, like it feels like I'm, you know, I'm just meeting you for the first time, but like, you know, I'm excited to see you at Hangout. I'm excited to see where the whole journey goes. Well, actually, I, I work at Corky, so we are family. So we I mean, are <laughs> we're totally related. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, the, there's so many different musicians out there, and would you get time to see some of these artists at the festivals that play? And what about artists you would maybe want to work with in the future since you've already worked with Walk the Moon? Oh, wow. Um, I'm a really collaborative person. Like I love to, I, I love to make music in any, in any kind of way. You know, like I don't feel like I have one way. There's not one way to write a song. You sure. know what I mean? There's a million ways to make music. So there's a lot of people that I would love to work with. I don't think I want to name them because, like, I just don't. Sure, sure. I don't want to say that, but I love to make. I, I would love to make music with a lot of people. I think it's an exciting time that feels kind of nostalgic where artists can connect in multiple ways and it's not so much like this is my song and my like this is 
one song, one artist. You know what I mean? You can make music across genres, across cultures. It's really exciting. That's, that's awesome, man. Um, let's get into who, Mor who Morgan is. Okay. Your Netflix guy? Um, yeah. What actually. do you watch? Right now I'm watching Big Mouth. Or Loud Mouth or Big Mouth? It, it, it? It's, it's, uh, I think it's Loud Mouth. Loud yeah. Mouth. That show, do you know it? Yeah, the animated one, the right? The animated one. It's, it's really like, good. It's like, it, it, it talks about like growing up and, and um, like puberty and this like, and this hilarious, it kind of reminds me of that old uh, Ren and Stimpy. You remember that yeah, show? Yeah, yeah. It's like, that's kind of cute, but when you zoom in, it's like disgusting and awesome. Right, and dirty, right. And I love that stuff. Uh, yeah, I'm a big office person. I mean, every, when, I'm, when I go to bed, dude, I just put the office. We were like, in Scranton on tour last, like, last month, and it was just like, I think we just, I think probably my top played song that month was probably the theme song from the office. Really? Yeah. Well, that's awesome. Um, let's see. Nashville guy, right? Yeah. I mean, you've been in Memphis, you know, you got, you got hot chicken and you have like Gus's chicken and Jack Pirtle's here, you know? Right. I, well, if you're gonna you're if you're gonna open up the conversation about hot chicken and you're really gonna, open, we're gonna, we're gonna, gonna go it, there because we just got a Hattie B's here. Well, I'm gonna dog on Hattie B's. Oh, Ooh. what's the OG spot that you go to? Prince's. That's that's what's up. That literally that's is the real. OG spot. That's yeah. If you're gonna say real, like, then you have to go with Prince's because Hattie B's, Hattie B's usurped this moment that Prince's was already having. I feel like <laughs> I feel like I just like. Uh, if anyone is listening that works with Hattie B's, like, yeah, I'm sorry, that's the truth. Hey, but you're from Nashville, you, you, know, you yeah. know your stuff. Prince is the OG. I remember one time I literally like took an Uber to a Prince's, got hot chicken to go and took an Uber to the airport and then flew with that hot chicken in tub. I brought my own Tupperware too and brought it back to LA to give it to people in LA because there's this whole trend where everyone's like serving Nashville hot chicken right. at, at bars and I'm like, no, 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 no. I'm going to I'm going to educate you and I'm just going to bring you all hot chicken from Nashville from Prince's. It's so weird when I go to like these hot chicken places, I get the mild. <laughs> I can't yeah. even do the hot cuz well, it's really I, really hot. I went to the Hot Chicken Festival in Nashville. Have you been there? No. Uh -uh. Okay. I know what you're talking about, but it's, no, I haven't. Been. They have an literally an ambulance on site. They have an entire med booth. I'm not kidding. Yeah, it's like right. because it gets hot and people get crazy and go like super hot and honestly end up like at the ambulance that's like on site it's crazy so what they do douse you with milk and water just to make sure i have no here eat all this like ice cream milk on tap yeah uh christmas is getting close man we're in december I right know. favorite christmas movie oh my god uh or you like top three whatever you know well what's that movie where the guy shows up at the doorstep with the signs is that love actually? Yes. Isn't that a Christmas movie? It, it can be. Because there's set, snow on the ground, set, might as well. It's set during Christmas, I think. Right. I think like that, Die Hard. Die Hard I mean, is a Christmas is movie. Is Home Alone a Christmas movie? Absolutely. Then Home Alone. That's number one. Perfect. That, that, that's one of my favorite. National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. That's, yeah. that's always a good one. Um, best Christmas gift you think that you can remember you got? Oh, wow. Um, oh, these are the hard hitting questions. This is good. You know, um,. Gosh, I feel like I just want to. I, I just want to honestly be like, my family didn't give a lot of gifts. Like it wasn't like a big. It wasn't about how much money could you spend. You know. Sure. I think, I think I realize now like the value of just like family and sort of being home for the holidays. You know, like I think the best gift that I ever got was just like being around family. Honestly, that's real. I'm not crying. He's crying. I'm not crying. I feel fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Good, good. Mom was wrestling figures when I was eight, so whatever. That's, oh, wait we, got, <laughs> wait. we got Power Rangers. We got Power Rangers toys. I remember one year. My aunt literally, like, like she, like, strong-armed people in the store to get these Power Rangers. It was, like, it was crazy. Um... So you're you're gonna take some time off. You, you told me something, and I definitely want to get into it. You are uh, gonna go to Los Angeles, yes. right? Tell me what you're doing there, because I think that's a huge thing. Yeah, we um, there's a bunch of awesome bands led by the Griswolds, and speaking of Christmas, yeah, and it includes uh, me and Nick from Walk the Moon, Atlas Genius, Bad Sons, um, Mainland, Your Smith, Genevieve. We're all getting together and throwing a benefit concert with Alt 98.7 there and raising money for the families that were affected by the fires that we just had in California. Nice. And also to help the wildlife, because there's a ton of displaced animals. Right. So 
we're doing that in LA on Monday. That, that, that's awesome, man. I think that when people use their, I guess, I don't want to say that I hate the word, like their celebrity or whatever, you know, but when, but you use it for a cause like that, especially animals, like you said, you nailed it, man. There's a yeah. lot of animals out there. There's a lot of people who lost homes. They've lost everything, personal possessions. Totally. I mean, things, you know, just old pictures and stuff like that. I think I, that's a huge thing that you can I do think we that. looked at it like, you know, you say celebrity, we say like, that's not even why we do what we do, right. but like, honestly, like we look at it, like what can we do as a community to give something back and what we can do is music, you know what I mean? Like that's what awesome. we can do is is create a, an event and a moment for people to be together and and come together and raise money to help somebody else, you know? And I guarantee you that, that if you're, we're all not going to be able to go to this event, but I'm sure you're going to have it on one of your social media pages, yeah, right? Yeah, I think we, we're going to try to do some live stuff and try to, you know, have as many people be a part of it as they can. What's your favorite type of social media? Like the Instagrams, the Facebook, Snapchat? I what's, love... What's your go-to, you know? I love Instagram. Me too. Like, yeah, I, 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 I love it. I love the stories. I love DMing. Like, I love, like, the messaging. You know what I mean? Like, I get message for, me, messages from people, like... Literally, you know, and they're like, you're probably never gonna read this, and they say stuff, and then I love responding. You know, I'm like, I'm reading it, and then they're like, is some, is this someone running your social? Right, and yeah. I'm like, this is me talking to you. You know, it's super direct. Facebook is it outdated or? I don't even know. I don't know what Facebook is. Really? Yeah. I, you know, I. I'm gonna just say Facebook is for moms. <laughs> oh, cool. Let me close down my computer real quick. <laughs> no, uh, but Twitter and all that kind of jazz, you're on that, right? Uh, yeah, Twitter, you know, Twitter is like a great news, like <clears throat> a great way to find stuff like immediately. You know what I mean? Like to see what's trending like right now or breaking news. Like, you know, especially like in LA when you, when the fires were happening, that was like the source of like what's, because there was actually a fire that broke out in Griffith Park, which is close to where I live. And oh, wow. so, you know that before that was even reported on the news because there was so much happening in the news at that time like twitter was like fire this area this is where it's this percent contained so twitter kind of acts and twitter especially in the age of like activism and mm -hmm. speaking up twitter is like incredible for that but instagram is just like fun well speaking of that i feel bad now like i mean are you okay is your house okay you were you like is everything yeah. fine without your people out there you, i had a friend who lo like literally his whole house in malibu was like demolished oh, and you know it was crazy like watching it happen on the internet and feeling like helpless like I can't I can't don fire gear and like go into the fires um, and that's actually where this idea to like do a concert and raise money to help came from because that was that's something that we felt like we could do you know my brother lives and, and, and now your new cousin um, he lives in, he lives in Riverside yeah. and so he travels and I just have a brand new nephew and I was like I will go Captain Planet that myself and we will just wow. take care of it all and he said everything's fine with him but I mean of course people lost a lot of people stuff. went out into the Inland Empire because the, the air was so crazy in Los Angeles like the fire and right. all of that stuff um, you say Riverside I actually found my dog in Riverside I rescued her really yeah Look at you, humanitarian, yeah. musician, and, and worldly just human being. Just a lover of people and animals. And the guy's going to get me off of work over Corky's. It's awesome. Um, let see. So you are um, going to be on tour in February. you got yes. a long tour. You're going to be out with the guy, Robert DeLong. Yes. And uh, do you know him? Um, we are internet friends, if I'm going to be honest. Like, we... Uh, we, I think we like. I remember. Oh, I remember when he followed me on Instagram, and I was like, "This is exciting." Um, but we haven't like met in person. We've only like messaged through the internet. And then I'm a fan of his music, and obviously, I think he's a fan of mine. How long is that tour gonna be? Uh, well, what you know at this moment is a month. Okay, right on. The whole month. Um, a lot the of the whole month of February. But you know, stay tuned. Can I, tell, you know can, I mean? can I tell you, since we're family now, can I tell you a story about Robert DeLong? Yeah. Okay, so like when you have your iPhone and you have like Apple Music on there, if you plug it into your phone, your car or whatnot, it just goes, right? Yeah. Well, usually it goes by alphabetical songs. And for the past like 7,000 years, his song Acid Rain was the first cool. thing that would come constantly on there. And of course I'm like, all right, well, I know when I want to listen to something else. I get it, dude. I know every word. I know. I know a guy who made a song called like I think it was like you know asterisk star space a a a like that was just the title of it. Right. That he literally made so it would because when he would plug his phone into the car, some random song would come on. So he made a song that just had like a very ambient like sort of like synth like 
singer that like grew um, and was like a pleasing tone. And by the time he realized that the song was playing, he could switch it to whatever he wanted because he would plug it in. He would plug his phone in the car, and all of a sudden, like a song he didn't want to hear would like start blasting. So he right. made the song to start when you plug it in to your car. Yeah, so I I, I I love all that. It's great. I was like, all right, okay, Robert, I'm going to have to like, you know, push you down. I love it. And then the best part, then my mom gets in the car, and the first song that comes on is Lil Wayne's Abortion. And I'm like, oh, wow. wonderful. <laughs> I'm like, maybe I'll put Robert along back on there. I like your mom's. <laughs> I, like, I, I love her. I don't know her. My mom's awesome. My yeah. mom's awesome, dude. She has Eminem albums. She's got No Doubt albums. And she's older-ish. We won't go there because, you know, right. I love her. But right. my mom's super hip, too. That's super cool. Um, so, let what about other music that you kind of listen to? Because you just said, you know, you, you're, you're worldly, you you dig all kind of different music. Name maybe yeah. some artists that, that you kind of listen to. Um, on heavy rotation on my phone right now is Blood Orange. Do you know Dev Hines? No. Um, Dev Hines, he, he produces a lot of stuff, but his project is called Blood Orange. Um, does a lot of stuff with Solange. He, he just released an album this year called Negro Swan that's uh -huh. just like, it, it honestly feels like... Um, I don't even know how to describe it. It's like a, it's like a cinematic, artistic, political, sonic masterpiece. You know, it's wow. just like soup, like real instruments and synths, electronic, and his voice is is beautiful. I'm really into his album right now. I, I'm into uh, Super Organism. Very you ever cool. heard of them? I've seen them live. Wow, I, yeah. I'm, I'm now I'm really jealous. I, I think I think they're phenomenal, and they did a thing, and I want you to get on it. So everyone who's listening, Morgan, get your people together. We want to put you on NPR, that tiny desk thing, dude. Yeah, you would dream. kill that, That's man. My dream. Right, and I saw them on there, and they were phenomenal. They were using like apples and water bottles and things like that, and it was very obscure and very uh, eclectic, and it just kind of drew me in even more. Totally, but the songs are great. Absolutely. Speaking of songs. Right? Nice little segue, right? Uh, there you go, brother. We're, we're family. It's how we roll. Um, we're going to do a live performance right now. All right, here we are in the I-96 studios. When uh, you want to introduce this song? Um.